but it is on the Amazon wish list and my birthday is coming up soon so maybe my mother or Jason if you're watching this you'll get it for me hello sweet angels it's your girl Jay and today I am here with a mid-month wrap-up for October 2024 it is October 14th and I have already read 13 books I'm actually almost done my 14th book um, but it is wrapped right now because I'm currently filming a blind book reading vlog situation where I have no idea what this book is my mom picked it three years ago for me and I never finished reading them there's still another one on my bed but the vlog of me reading this will be up shortly you can also check out the other two vlogs that i did for the other two books and also the video that i did trying the first chapter of all four of the books so if you're interested in those videos those will be up but this is my 14th book of the month and it's only the 14th day so i figured to make things a little bit easier on myself i decided that i was going to film this mid-month wrap-up and then talk about the rest of the books that i read for the month in a wrap-up at the end of the month see jay can be smart sometimes sometimes but without further ado let us get started the first book that i have is tender beast this is by lizelle sambury and i gave this one a four out of five stars sunny is one of several children in the very wealthy very complicated bear family she tries to be happy and perfect at all times to uphold the family name especially after her younger brother dom was accused of murdering his girlfriend and is now awaiting trial their mother recently passed away and left sunny a note that said take care of Dom. That's when another body is found in the private school that their mother founded and Sunny will stop at nothing to ensure that Dom is not a suspect in this murder. I really like this story, hence the four star rating. I loved that it was set in Canada and had so many little references to Toronto. It was really fun to be able to pinpoint exactly where the characters were at a given time. The family dynamics was probably the best part of this book. The sibling relationships were all so complicated and all of them had differing relationships with each other. The complex relationship of Sunny and her older sister Carter was so strained it had me so invested to figure out what was going to happen next in the story i also really liked how fiercely sunny defended dom even when the rest of the family were so turned against him there were just so many twists and turns in this book i think that the horror aspect of it was so well done and i am very very intrigued in picking up another book by this author sometime soon i give it a four out of five stars next we have may the best player win this is by kyla zhao and i gave this one a three out of five stars. This one follows Mei Li. She is a 12 year old chess player. She has big dreams of becoming the captain of her middle school chess team. After a big win at the state championships, her team is invited to participate in the nationals. She was featured in her favorite chess magazine as being an up and coming female chess player. She is feeling a lot of pride, but then her friend turned enemy, Ralph, decides that he is also interested in running for the team captain. And the only reason she is getting all of this attention is because she's a girl. So they wage a bet to determine who is the better chess player once and for all. This is a middle grade book. I do think that the target audience will really enjoy this. I think that May will be a very relatable character for a lot of people. I really liked that the book showed May being very overwhelmed with her sport and it needing to be the best. Even though she loved the game, it also brought a lot of pressure, which I think is very, very relatable for all sport players. I really like that she had to learn how to balance her feelings of love towards the game with her overwhelming feelings as well. I think that May had an amazing support system with her friends and family. I think that her and Becca's relationship friendship was so stinking cute. I also really liked Mario. He is a soccer player from her middle school who she did a photo shoot with and they became quick friends. I think that they helped each other go through a lot of character development by the end of the story which I really love to see. I gave this one a three out of five stars. Next I read Gentlest of Wild Things. This is by Sarah Underwood and I gave this one a 4.5 out of five stars. This one follows Irene and Phoebe. They are twin sisters and they share an incredible bond. They are fiercely protective of one another, so when Phoebe falls ill, Irene steps up and starts to take care of her more. 
Irene strikes up a bargain with Leandros, who is a descendant of Eros, and he has his sights set on making the ill Phoebe his wife. If Irene is able to complete three tasks that Leandros puts forward, then he has to marry her instead and leave Phoebe alone. While completing her first task, Irene meets Leandro's hidden away daughter, Lamia, and she discovers that her magical tears are what creates the powder called Desire. I personally am a sucker for Greek retellings, so I was very excited for this. This is an Eros and Psyche retelling, and I was instantly hooked from the very first chapter. I loved these characters so much. I listened to it on audiobook, and I think that the narrators did such an incredible job bringing these characters to life. This is a very slow burn sapphic romance, and I absolutely adored Lamia and Irene. Irene was so determined to save her sister and you could really tell how much she truly cared for Phoebe. I think that the tasks that she had to complete were very intriguing and I loved watching her try to figure out how to complete them with Lamia's help. I think that Lamia was such a multi-layered and complex character. It completely broke my heart to see her struggling with her want for freedom but also feeling so fiercely loyal to the father that is essentially abusing her for her tears. I loved to hate Leandros. I think that he is such a vile man. I think that the concept of desire, which was basically a powder that you would blow into women's faces and it would essentially make them fall in love with you, the concept of that is so terrifying, but also like <laughs> men would, you know, men would. I will definitely be picking up more from this author soon. I really enjoyed this story. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next, I read Mysterious Ways by Wendy Wonder and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This one follows 17 year old Maya. She has the ability to look at somebody and instantly know everything about them. This includes their past, their deepest secrets, their biggest fears, like literally everything about them. After a very public breakdown, she gets sent to Whispering Pines Psychiatric Hospital. When she is released, she is sent to a new school, and when she arrives, she meets a boy named Tyler who she starts to fall for, and along the way, she decides that since she can hear everybody's thoughts and their hopes and desires, that she is going to help them achieve these. I think that this book was rather slow in pacing. It did pick up a little bit in the second half of the book, but it took quite a while to get there. I was invested in Maya's story and I did want to see what happened with it, but I can't say that I connected with Maya as a character. I do think that she went through a little bit of character development by the end of the story, but honestly not that much. I do think that her ability was very interesting and I do wonder what I would do if I had that ability, but this ability that she had did make her a little bit annoying and a little bit rude at times. I did listen to this on audiobook and I do think that the narrator did a pretty good job with Maya's voice. But overall, I don't think that this was anything particularly memorable for me, so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Are the next five books are all part of the same series. It is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I have the first four books in the series and then also Tales of the Peculiar which is basically the ten short stories or like fairy tales that are mentioned in the series. So I'm going to talk about each of them, but I didn't love them, which was very, very depressing, to be honest. I have actually already read the first book, so it is a reread for me. I dropped my rating. I originally gave it a 3.5, and this time around I gave it a 3 stars. If you don't know, this is a series by Ransom Riggs, and it follows Jacob. He is 16 years old, and he has always looked up to his grandfather. When he passes away suddenly, Jacob is devastated. Unable to rid himself of this grief that he is feeling, his father and him travel to Wales to explore the origin places of the fantastical stories that his grandfather used to tell him about when he was younger. Upon arriving, Jacob discovers that the orphanage that used to be run by Miss Peregrine is no longer there, and its place is a very dilapidated home. It is no longer inhabited by the peculiar children that Jacob's grandfather used to tell him about, or so he thought. I read this back in 2018 and I remember giving it a 3.5 but I think it was a very generous 3.5. I know that everybody was giving it a 4 or a 5 star read and I didn't want to be the odd one out I guess but upon rereading I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. 
I just thought that it was extremely slow paced. It didn't really hold my interest at all. I was more interested in looking at all the pictures in the book rather than the actual story itself. I still didn't really feel connected to any of the characters. I also just think that the romance in this is beyond creepy. I don't think I will ever get behind it. But I listened to this on audiobook and I do think that definitely helped me with the story. I think that if I had just been reading it, I may have actually put it down. Then I moved straight in into Hollow City. This is the second book and I gave this one a three out of five stars as well. I don't want to give a synopsis for the rest of the series books because I think that it does kind of spoil where the books go. I did like that the book included a sort of character summary of who you've met in the first book. I think that it would be very helpful for those who don't go straight into the rest of the series after the first book. I did like this a bit more than the first book but I still can't say that I was fully invested in the story or the characters. I did like that we traveled to other loops other than just Miss Peregrine's in this. I think that that was a fun aspect of the story but still find the romance creepy. Would have enjoyed it a lot more if it had just been a friendship between Jacob and this other peculiar person, but not a fan. Then after that I jumped straight into Library of Souls, the third book. I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars, so I did like it a bit more than the first two books. This one picks up essentially right where the second book leaves off and I, like I said, liked it a little bit more. I do still think that the pictures are the best part of the story. I did really like the hollows in this and I do think that Jacob's power is very intriguing. I did like that we got to learn a little bit more about Jacob's abilities and what that meant for the group as a whole. I did feel a little bit more invested in the characters this time around but still don't like the romance. We'll never like the romance. I originally thought that these three books were the end of the series. I thought it was only going to be a trilogy which I think a lot of people thought that because I do think that it wrapped up quite nicely for the story that was being told but then Ransom Riggs decided that he was going to write three more books in the series so I did read the fourth book A Map of Days and this is another one that I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. I do think that the first half of this book was quite slow but it did pick up a bit in the end. I did really like that we got to meet new people with different peculiarities. This time around the characters are exploring America instead of the UK and I did really like seeing these characters in a new setting. This one also has colored pictures this time around which was really fun to see because I got so accustomed to the black and white of the first three books. I do think that this book wasn't necessarily needed in the series because we are left on so many more unanswered questions now but then again there are two other books that are in the series. Will I pick them up? I don't know. I don't own them but if I own them I probably would otherwise I'm not gonna go like out of my way to find them but it was enjoyable but I am still not a fan of the romance and I probably would not be a fan of the romance in the next two books. I personally think that it should burn because it's freaking weird. And then I read The Tales of the Peculiar. This is obviously again by Ransom Riggs. This one I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Like I said this is the 10 legends or folk tales that are told within the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. They heft this book along with them on a journey that they go on and they often mention the stories that are inside as like morals and things like that. I do think that this was a fun little addition to the series. I really liked the illustration that are at the beginning of each story. Like look at that, so detailed. It almost looks like it's a coloring book. Like if the lines were just a little bit thicker I could definitely color these in. There were definitely stories that I enjoyed more than others. I think that The Locust and The Girl Who Tamed Nightmares was probably my favorites but overall I did enjoy all of them and I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Then I picked up The King's Men by Nora Sakovic. This is the third book in All for the Game. This is another one that I thought was originally just a trilogy but a fourth book was released. I believe it's called The Sunshine Court. Have I read it? No. 
know, I was excited that I was going to actually finish this and then I discovered there's another book. But this one I actually did really enjoy. I gave it a four out of five stars. This book takes place a few days after the second one finishes. The second one I actually have right here. It's called The Raven King. I also gave that one a four stars and I think I gave The Foxhole Court a 3.5 out of five stars. So the series definitely grew on me as I continued reading. These characters are so rough around the edges, but they make you root for them in the end. Neil is such a complex character. So is Andrew. I think that the romance was so insanely slow burn, but honestly it was kind of worth it in the end. I think that the fierce protectiveness that Andrew feels towards Neil was just so good. I think that the character development of this story is so well done. The found family aspect of it is definitely my favorite part. I loved watching the foxes band around Neil. By the end of the series, I became so invested in an imaginary game. If you haven't read the series, it's called Xe. It's kind of like lacrosse, but I think that it would be such a cool and exciting game to watch in person. I do think that if the chance arises, I will read the fourth book. I just don't own a copy of it, but it is on the Amazon wish list and my birthday is coming up soon. So maybe my mother or Jason, if you're watching this, you'll get it from. And then I'll complete another series. But overall, I really did like this book. I gave it a four out of five stars. I think overall the series would probably get a four from me since I gave two books four and one book a 3.5. I feel like that evens out to like a 3.75 and we round that up to four. I don't know. I'm not a mathematician. I can't even do grade school math, but that's what I'm going with. A four star for the series overall from me. Next up, I read The Life Impossible by Matt Haig and I gave this one a two out of five stars. This was definitely probably the book that I was not the biggest fan of for the month so far. This follows Grace Winters. She is a retired math teacher. She has gone through a lot of grief and loss in her life. She receives news that an old friend that she lost touch with has passed away and she has actually left her home in Ibiza to Grace. Very confused, Grace decides to fly out to the house to take a look and she also decides that she is going to try to figure out what happened to her friend and how she lost her life. I found this book to be so incredibly boring. I don't think that it's necessarily a bad book. I just could not connect to it in any way. I think that this could have been a really great book. I think that the ideas explored were very interesting, but just the execution and something about it just was not for me. I think that the pacing was just way too slow and I found the whole idea that this was supposed to be an email that Grace is writing to a student who emailed her, basically trauma dumping on her. So she was like, hey, I'm gonna send you back in 300 page email. Also trauma dumping um, was just was just an interesting choice because if I had received that from a teacher, I would have probably gone, okay, and then exited out of it after reading a couple sentences, so concept was a choice. But yeah, this one was just not for me. I do think that other people will enjoy it, but I was just not one of those people. I gave it a two out of five stars. Then I read The Last Hope School for Magical Delinquents. This is by Nikki Palpatro, and I gave this one a four out of five stars. It follows 12-year-old Vin Lucas. She is on her last chance with her out of control magic. She has just been expelled from her latest school and so she is sent to the Last Hope School for Magical Delinquents. If she is not able to master her magic at this final school, then she will be kicked out of the magic system forever. This is Nikki's debut middle grade novel. It has such fun characters. I actually met Nikki and she signed the book for me, which is so stinking cool. I like squealed because I absolutely loved Crown of Feathers. Have I read the rest of the series? No, but they're literally right there and they've been sitting here for um, a couple of years because um, I keep meaning to read them and I figure if I put them near where I'm filming, then I'll read them. Has that worked? No, but shut up, it's fine. I think that I definitely would have given this a five out of five stars if I read it when I was 12. I honestly think that so many people at that age will adore this. I do think that it was quite predictable, but I did have a really fun time reading it. I think that the magic system was very intriguing. I liked how we were given a summary sheet at the beginning that kind of outlines all of the magical casts and their abilities. I think that Vin was an amazing character. I think that she goes through so much character growth by the end of the story. 
I also think that the found family in this is really well done. I think that the support system that Vin finds in her newfound friends was really great and I loved how she had to learn how to trust these people. My favorite part of the story was 100% Brucifer. He is a little fire sprite that comes into Vin's life unexpectedly, but he was definitely the highlight of the story for me. I really hope that there is a second book coming in the series. I feel like there is because we are left on a little bit of a cliffhanger so I really really hope so because I don't want to be done with these characters. I really like this. I give it a four out of five stars. And then the last book that I'm going to talk about is The Art of Pretend. This is by Lauren Cool, and I give this one a four out of five stars. This one follows Ren and her best friend Etta. They met 10 years ago at NYU. Etta comes from money while Ren struggles to make ends meet. When Ren discovers that Etta is moving to Barcelona on her parents' request, she is absolutely devastated. Enter Archer, who is Etta's older brother. He is an artist and Ren is instantly drawn to him. Ren is determined to keep her budding romance with Archer a secret from Etta while she is away and it's kind of the story of her trying to figure out how to navigate that. Honestly, there is not much plot to this, but I was so invested in these toxic relationships. There is so much drama in this. Every single character is so extremely flawed, but that made me want to know more about them. I think that this is a very interesting story about power dynamics. There were so many dysfunctional and complex relationships in this. The relationship between Etta and Ren was so toxic, but I was so invested in figuring out what was going to happen if Etta found out about Ren and Archer. Like, is she gonna explode? Is she gonna accept it? We don't know, but I needed to know. I honestly could not decide if I was rooting for them or rooting for their demise, but it made for a very fun time. I gave this a four out of five stars. All right, everybody, so those were the first 13 books that I've read in the month of October 2024. By the end of the month I will have another wrap-up of all the other books that I read, but let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!